Hi everyone, Lovnet is uh, honored to be hosting the Women Leaders in Tech series. Uh, these webinars will be hosting uh, women tech uh, leaders uh, who will be interviewed for 10 minutes. Today, we are thrilled to have Farah Fawaz with us. Farah is a VP of Quality Control at Allogen Therapeutics. Farah will be interviewed by myself, Pamela Khalaf. I'm a Senior Strategic Analysis and Intelligence Manager at Genentech. So Farah, welcome. We're very excited to have you. Thank you, Pamela, for having me. It's my privilege. Farah, you're a leader in the field of uh, biotechnology and specifically in cell and gene therapy. What are the biggest opportunities in the field today? I think that today we are really on the cusp of a new revolution in biotech. Uh, the past 25 to 30 years had witnessed the advancement of antibodies as a major modality in the biotech. And these really had revolutionized the uh, therapy of many unmet uh, medical needs. Uh, in the recent years, like just the past four or five years, we have witnessed many advancements that are gonna catapult us into a different era at this point. First, we have the advance advancement of some uh, tools to be able to genetically modify cells. Second, uh, for example, in the past four years, we have seen the approval by FDA of uh, four drugs so far that are called autologous cell therapies. These are really exciting in the sense that they're gonna introduce us into a new era. And what these do is that cells from cancer patients in this case are taken out, uh, modified genetically and transfused back to the patient. And the results that have been seen are phenomenal. Um, basically people who had uh, struggled with cancer and were at their you know, third line of treatment are seeing complete responses. With that, we do see that there's gonna be more advancement in that area, looking into many more indications for autologous cell therapy. But more interestingly, it's gonna open the door to the allogeneic cell therapy, the field I'm actually in at this point, which is that we are gonna be able to take cells from healthy donor, genetically manipulate them and put them back into patients. And we do have the tools at this point to make this happen. And so that is really exciting. Uh, I cannot answer this question fully without addressing as well the various COVID vaccines that we have just uh, witnessed in the past few months. Uh, this truly was phenomenal and really showing the advancement of tools like uh, adenovirus use to deliver uh, a gene and, and cause an immune response or deliver RNA as well. So truly, I think we're on the cusp of uh, really uh, a great era for the next 20 years in biotech. Yeah, for sure. It's very exciting to be involved um, in these areas. Um, I guess with all these uh, um, you know, advances, Farah, there are probably also uh, challenges that arise. So if you, what, what would be the key challenges that uh, you see the field is facing today? Yeah, so from my perspective, at least in my specific area, which is really related to making those products, what we call the chemical manufacturing and control, I think we're going to have to make sure we align very closely with regulatory agencies. So we are really paving the way into a whole new field. Uh, there are some guidance as to expectation of regulatory agencies in those fields, but they are not mature yes, yet. And therefore, we're going to have to work very closely with agency to address their expectations, how to characterize those products, how to address changes that are inevitable during the drug manufacturing process as you modify your processes to optimize them, as you move from manufacturing facility to another, uh, what we call in our field comparability between different processes is gonna be uh, a little bit more challenging than what we've experienced with other biotechnology products. Uh, similarly, I think we would need to have uh, more uh, technical advancement that was, is gonna parallel that uh, uh, progress of the cell therapy er uh, era meaning that we would need more tools, more technologies 
to allow for the characterization of those products. I think these are pretty key. Of course, the clinical advancement is paramount, but uh, I just wanted to focus on the technical area in which I am involved. For sure. And Farah, probably if we were to uh, take a step back in time and, and, you know, we wouldn't have really foreseen all these advances to be happening so quickly uh, and with the extent that they've happened. So if you were to think back at the time when you were starting your career uh, in your early 20s, what would you tell yourself today? Yeah, that's, that's interesting. I certainly was going into my PhD in the mid 80s. At the time, really, there was no biotech. It's really maybe the birth of the first biotech company. And um, I would tell myself, stay the course, because when you go into a cellular and molecular biology program of, uh, for PhD at that time, the, the end was not clear uh, in my mind. Uh, you know, there was a lot of questions whether in the case that a, I couldn't get an academic position, it wasn't clear that there would be avenues to pursue. And I think it's been really exciting to really decide to stay the course and not doubt myself and have second thoughts and, and, and really continue. Yeah, and, and with, you know, by staying in the course, your, your accomplishments have been many over the years. So what would be three, uh, you know, biggest accomplishments that you're proud of that, that you can share with us? Yeah, um, and, and while my career and uh, my training have been really very important, uh, I want to say that my biggest two ac accomplishments are my two daughters. Uh, <laughs> And I think uh, the, the, it is really, I'm a very proud mom of two uh, very bright uh, young women who are paving their way in STEM fields as well. Um, second after that, I, I wanna say that I was really privileged to be part of two teams that have advanced uh, two programs to approval, to a global approval. Uh, those of us who are in the fields really don't take it for granted that we will witness or we will be working on a program that will ever get an approval. One can spend their whole career and, and not get there. And um, I, I, was, I had the opportunity to work on two programs for close to 10 years in parallel in uh, different capacities. I actually was the lead on one of them. And to see one approved in 2016 and one in 2018, I think this was a huge reward. Yeah, for sure. Uh, that's very unique to be able to experience. Um, so Farah, I know we're coming up at time. Uh, so maybe just to close things off, uh, if you were to summarize your career with one sentence, what would that be? Very fulfilling. Um, from the perspective of um, science and intellectual curiosity in that field, it's been just exciting. Uh, you know, there's not enough time to even be able to remotely keep up with all the advancements. So it's really been exciting. But then very importantly, the fact that I've been able to apply what I like to do best to make a difference in people's lives is has been phenomenal. Thank you for all you do, Farah, and uh, for sharing with us your perspective on the field as well as your journey. Thank you. So Thank you much. so much for having me. Thank you.